who welcome the collective is here for your information, knowledge, and love. What we ask of you is to sit and listen. Listen to the vibration, listen to the frequency. For that is where it resonates within each one of your cells. That is where the healing, the understanding, the knowledge resides. Your ears will process the words, but it is this vibration that you will understand. So allow yourself this time to connect to the vibration and frequency. Love. This word love that exists within your vocabulary. How do you understand it? Where does it play a vital role in your awareness, in your existence, in all that you do? For it is a simple word. Love is a simple word. <clears throat> but what does it mean? Where does it reside? And then you add in the hmm, other aspects of love. Unconditional, self. What does it all mean? Where does it resonate with you? How do you coexist with this word love? What does it mean to you? But if you were to step away from the word itself, defocus from the letters that consist in the word love, and understand it from this vibrational aspect, from this vibrational point, where does it sit with you? On the surface? Just a bit below the surface? Deep with inside each and every one of you? Where does that vibration resonate with you? Do you understand this vibration? How can you feel this vibration? It doesn't matter the words that you put around it or how you say it. It's the first to understand its effect on you. Its vibrational effect on you and how it resonates with each cell in your body. Many of you say the words, I love you. I love myself. I unconditionally love you. I unconditionally love myself. But do the words hold the vibration? For that is a deep, deeper exploration. Where is it that you are vibrating when you speak? Is that vibration at its fullest? From our perspective and what we have witnessed is this. Each and every one of you have it in you. You understand that from a surface level, many of you. But many of you understand the depth of this vibration. But we can see that each and every one of you vibrate in this essence of love. But you will ask, how can I be vibrating in this essence of love with all of the chaos, with all of the uncertainty, with all of what is taking place upon this planet at this particular time? How do I resonate with that? How do I express that within myself? It's to step away. Not a great distance, but step away from all of that that is distracting you. All of that that is shielding you. For we can see the pure essence of all, and it is love. But from your standpoint, from your existence, and you look out around the world, what you see is the blanket, the shielding, the barriers that have been put up, not put up by your higher self or your energetic self,
but from your humanness. These barriers, or these mm, restrictions, this is a physical construct of understanding for this humanness. For you've entered into this human existence to have its challenges, but yet all the time understanding the depth of this vibrational aspect of love that sits here, right at the center. Many of you have peered in, you've done the work, but yet still you have the barriers. Many of you have shed the barriers away, but yet still are not expressing the fullness of your vibration of love. How does one do that? How does one, as a human, in its physicality, exude, emanate, live fully centered in this vibration of love? It's to begin slowly. It's to begin individually. You can say the words to yourself. You can look in a mirror and say the words to what is reflecting back at you. But again, those are just words. It is to be able to trigger that aspect of the vibration of love within. Allow yourself a moment of quiet, uh, nothing long, but just a moment of quiet to go inward and breathe into that aspect of the vibration that is you. For the love vibration is you. That is what your existence is. And when you find that vibration, there's no other like it. It is you. It is you that is vibrating at its fullest. You just now must allow it to be released. The barriers will fall away. The restrictions will fall away when you finally get to the point at which you understand the fullness of your true essence, this love essence. This doesn't mean you need to change your lifestyle or change your existence or do different things. For you are here purposefully to be a human and not run off to some isolated place, but to integrate with other humans, expressing yourself to the fullest, not by words, not by actions, but from the pureness of yourself. And that is what many humans have forgotten. The pureness, the pure essence of self. We see it. We see it moving around all over the place. But there are the barriers, there are the restrictions. So it is at a point now, much has been spoken about, about the times to come. This aspect of ascension, this aspect of an event, this aspect of moving forward with one's existence to another dimensional plane. It doesn't matter what you call it or when it's going to happen. But it is to understand this aspect of emanating at its fullest. Because for when you begin to emanate at your fullest potential, this essence of love, this essence of you, others and their barriers start to break away, start to unfold, allowing them to express themselves at a higher level. So it is to go into the next days to come to challenge yourself, to find a place in which you can begin this process of understanding what it is of your own vibration, this pureness of your own vibration and expressing that to the world. Just being, just emanating the pureness of you and again, not by words, not by actions, just your presence. 
Challenge yourself with that. And you will see the changes in others around you. And if you have questions, please begin. Thank you. What a beautiful opener. Leslie has a question. She wonders if the issues that she's experiencing in her body are connected to a past life experience. And how can we tell if what we're experiencing, um, or if you have any advice about what she's experiencing and what would help? Is there a particular significant uh, past life that's impacting her? For this understanding, <clears throat> of what is affecting this existence now at this particular point. One must understand the alignment between the past lives that you have lived and the ancestral line that is in place as well. There is a merging with the two. This merging aspect of the ancestral and the past. There is on the ancestral line, um, on both sides, uh, there is a restriction, there is mm, a binding, mm, the holding back, a withdrawing uh, that is influencing the energy stream coming from the ancestral into the existent. Uh, the past life experiences this process of mm, a number of lives past of prominent status, this aspect of being mm, the one that many looked to, the one that was up and high, the one that mm, the one that was of status amongst all others. But yet in that moment of status in that life and existence of status here too there is restriction it is self-restriction as if it isn't satisfying enough it isn't producing enough it isn't it isn't allowing the process of growth that is needed for you see, it doesn't matter whether it is up on high or mm, amongst the others. This aspect of restriction, holding oneself back, mm, afraid of what can be, but yet wanting to do more. These are the aspects in the realm in which now all come together here in this life. I need to do these things, but yet there's an underlying pull, a tugging that is restricting you. It is time to understand your life here, this existence. It is one to restrict the energy flow. Not to close it off, for if you were to close it off, you would lose perspective of the abilities that are mm, merging into your existence. But it is to restrict it. Just as you have been restricted in the past, it is time to restrict that energy flow. And by doing so, it opens your energy channel. It isn't being bombarded. It isn't being restricted outside of your existence. You are free to expand by restricting what is coming in. But by doing so, one must acknowledge. One must acknowledge the ancestral and the past and give it the gratitude that it deserves, that it has taught you the lessons that you've needed for this life. But it is time now to turn the valve, close it off just to a trickle, because that trickle are the lessons that are needed for this life. And that is going to give you the expansion you're looking for. Awesome. Thank you. And Olivia also has a past life question. She was told that she was an oracle in a past life, and she also heard a female voice tell her they wanted to follow you. 
Are those two things related? And can you speak to her about that, please? The aspect of the oracle is not one of the past lives. It is the ancestral line. This is deep within the ancestral line from the beginning to this point now. You carry this in through and it will continue on into the future. This aspect of seeing, this aspect of understanding what lies before, what lies ahead, what is immersed here in the present. For it... For it all lies before you here on a table. You can see what takes place. Whether you shuffle a set of cards or whether you peer into something, the future, the past, and the present all merge together to give you your understanding. This, mm, this aspect of... Mm, audio, this hearing, for your understanding what is coming online, for the oracle is just one aspect. You understand the, ba the able to see, but hearing, knowing all aspects of the Claire aspects of self are slowly being acknowledged and turned on for you understand that in this ancestral line that all aspects are now merging into your awareness here this is your path this is your existence allow them to come to their fullest potential beautiful thank you and mia has a question uh, she is interested in working in uh, the metaphysical space, but she feels often that she has her own self-healing that needs to take place first. What does she need to know to merge those two realities? First, this is an understanding for all those that are in this, as you say, metaphysical space, this space of wonder and awe the things unexplainable. For first, you have to understand you are human. You have chosen a human existence. You've chosen a physical human existence and all of its trials, its tribulations, its experiences from the past. And in that, it is going to layer a bit of challenge. These portions of healings that need to be done. As a human in this existence, to fully come clear of all healings is only for a few. For the rest of humanity, the challenge is aligning this unbalanced aspect of, I must do the healing in order to be an effective healer. I must do the healing in order to work effectively in this or that. How do you balance these is this. It is to continually have a process of acknowledgement of self. Understanding, yes, there is going to be small or large bits of healing that need to be done at particular points, and you take the appropriate time to do that for self. You do not <clears throat> mingle both aspects of healing and the work you are to do. For what you will begin to find is you begin to um, emerge and you begin to align uh, with the universe itself, the universe is going to set aside time for your own revelation, your own healing practice, your own healing of self. It will um, put you into a, a downturn, a valley, if it were, to find oneself. You work upon oneself, you understand, you go through the healing process for self. And at a point of completion, and then you rise again and you begin to do the work. But now you begin to do work 
on an amplified level because of all of what you've gained and learned during the healing process for self. This is the cycle for all that are in this field, in this understanding, in the metaphysical aspect, this cycle of working, doing the wondrous things, then going down into the valley to find self once again to heal, prepare, then emerge back out the other side, begin to do the work, but at an amplified level. This is the natural cycle, and you must begin to recognize that. But if you were to wait until all the healing is complete, you would never end up working in the arena because it will never be complete to its fullest aspect. So have that as your understanding. Small bits at a time, do the self-healing, but understand the universe is going to align the appropriate level of work for you, for self and for others. Good to know, thank you for that reminder. So we hear a lot about our DNA evolving and being activated as we go through this ascension or evolution, but Christine is curious, how do we know if our DNA is being activated? And when we have physical ascension symptoms, how can we differentiate those in regards to regular medical conditions? How do we differentiate? And the DNA activation aspect is one that is an ongoing process. For you see, this is an ongoing cycle mm, from some time back. There was a point at which the DNA upgrade process has been uh, switched on uh, for all humans. This is in preparation for this, as you would understand, event, ascension process, and all other aspects of it. It is a slow process. And at times, the, the alignments of your uh, planetary alignments and energetic alignments to your planet increase the amount of energy to activate more of the DNA. But it isn't quite activating all of the DNA. It's rearranging for your, true, your two primary strands of DNA, your true active strands of DNA are realigning themselves. They are adjusting frequency-wise to allow the human body to bring in more amplified energy. They are your antennas. They activate and then they begin to bring in more and more amplitude of energy and allowing it to disseminate through the body appropriately. Now, the symptoms that you speak of, how do you determine whether they are the ascension DNA process or medical. <clears throat> well, many have found and many understand that if they are experiencing a particular symptom and they don't quite understand what it is, but yet they go to a medical professional and the medical professional says there's nothing wrong with you based upon this test and that test and many other tests, we cannot determine that there's anything wrong. Then that is your first understanding that it is purely energetic. But do not be fooled by that as well. Your energetic changes will begin to mask some of the aspects of the physicality. Therefore, if you've had physical issues in the past that you understand need medical attention, the energy themselves are going to amplify some of those aspects. So that may become a little bit more difficult to understand. Is it energy or is it my physical symptoms? And how you can determine that is understanding your own physical body, coming into balance in communication with your physical body. It is this relationship you begin to build with your physical inner energetic systems. For if you know you've had a medical condition and you have some sort of injury or you have some sort of aspect of the physical body that has needed medical attention in the past, you understand its state. You understand at what level it gives you discomfort or allows you to do certain things. <clears throat> but if there is an alignment of energy or there's planetary alignments or some other aspects that you feel are coming into the planet, and those aspects of your physicality start to rise in pain or rise in discomfort. Understand that's more than likely 
the energy coming into your physical body and it will last just a short amount of time then once it settles out again then you'll go back to the normal state for those that don't have the physical issues with the human body you too will understand the amplification of discomfort in the body and again it is this relationship that needs to be built with the physical body the communication you have with the physical body is this me or is this the energy is this me is it the planets is it me is it this once you begin this communication alignment with your physical body it will begin to provide you the answers very quickly it will allow you to understand it is an energy alignment it is an upgrade take time for self it just as it has been expressed when you are in alignment and you are working in the field in which you work in the modality you wish to work in there are going to be moments where the energy is going to amplify for your own self-awareness or it'll take a downturn for your own self-awareness these are the key aspects to understand in this physicality of the humanness is the alignment of how all the universe around you is working with you and not against you. So when you build this relationship and this understanding, you can take time for yourself and you feel fine about it and you're not pressured or worried that you must be doing something else. So begin to build that understanding. Awesome. Thank you for that. Wendy is curious who her guides are that are working with her currently and do they have a message for her over the next few months? What does she need to know? Isis, Metatron, a council of tribal elders are present as well. Those are the three main aspects. Understanding their alignment to you will allow you to begin to forecast this series of events that are taking place in the near future. The tribal elders, as they form their council around you, they're going to be providing to you a series of understandings of healing, but healing on a different level, healing on a different aspect, a different plane, a dimensional healing aspect uh, for they will come to you in the mm, pre-dream state this aspect of just beginning to fall into your sleep pattern into your dream state they will come to you they will surround you and they'll begin to provide you this mm, mm, aspect of healing within an altered reality state uh, for you're going to be working uh, within a multi-dimensional plane that is going to affect healing across not only yourself but uh, a series of other individuals that are um, just on the horizon they're making their alignments now to align with you but you're going to do the pre-work within this multi-dimensional space awesome thank you Ali had a meditation, a short meditation, a little while back, and she saw a golden thread that connected from her, and it went forward, and then it broke into three different golden threads. She's curious what those golden threads represented, please. For as this observation of this golden thread was placed in awareness, and it... Um, cleaving itself into three separate lines, three separate channels. They are channels of communication that are opening. Just as one tunes a radio to a particular channel for broadcast, these are three channels of information that are opening up. Uh, simply put, it is a communication channel open to the past, open to the present, and open to the future. Uh, for this individual, as they have been progressing in their awareness, 
it has all been one combined aspect of awareness and understanding, mainly for self in this emergence. But now there is a point at which the channels themselves are separating out to bring information in, not only for self, but those that approach. This is different. Do not mistake this to be those that work in the psychic or mediumship aspect. This is reaching out into other reality planes to bring forth information on each one of the channels. This is not a parallel existence on another existent timeline either. This is node connections within the quantum field. So it is at any point at which you wish to connect to the past to bring forth information that can be then utilized here in the existent time frame. The present is to work dimensionally within the present plane of existence to affect change with what is brought in from the past and what will be brought in from the future. The future is just that, just as it is the past, reaching further out of this existent timeline to bring in information again to affect change here within this dimensional timeline. Fantastic. Thank you for that. So Naomi recently had two water pipes burst in three days. And the night before one of the pipes burst last week, she woke up in the middle of the night uh, to her bedroom door being flung open and an apparition or a ghost floating through. So we're curious, who or what was that being? Did that being have anything to do with the pipes bursting? And what does she need to know about this? To understand what has aligned, and this is, hmm, this is what you have to understand. The apparition, one, you, hmm, this apparition is an aspect of self. And this is an aspect, not the higher self, but this is an aspect of self within this plane that you are projecting. This is one that you have relied upon in the past, not quite to this extent. It hasn't been this mm, dramatic to this extent, but it is an aspect of self that mm, prepares you for change. For mm, change was needed, there was an aspect that this mm, place that you reside uh, was not mm, fully in alignment. And it needed this aspect of self mm, to push on you a bit. And the aspects of the pipes, mm, not all. Uh, one, yes. The others were residual aspects. Uh, the first is you mm, allowing that to take place, to bring awareness that this change is imminent. But then the apparition of self needed to be in place in order for you to recognize it is now time. For you've seen this apparition before, but not quite to its fullest extent. And understand this is an aspect of you that mm, you carry with you. Uh, it is a bit of a mm, protector of sorts. It knows what you are to do before you do it, and then provides you guidance while you are doing it. And when you are reluctant to move forward with the guidance that is being provided, then that's when it does make its appearance or provides a bit of a push, whether it is within the physical space or within you, to move forward with a particular decision, a particular mm, transition, a particular movement. So do not take any fear in this. But now that you have this deeper understanding, it is one to call upon it. Make a relationship that you understand that it is there to provide you clear guidance, clear, appropriate guidance. And at that point, once the relationship is built, there will be no need to push into the physical existence to 
affect the change. Wow, thank you for all of that. So Judy will be traveling to Las Vegas in order to go to Zion National Park and Antelope Canyon, and she's felt very strongly that she needed to go to Antelope Canyon, in, located in the Navajo, Navajo Nation. Can you tell her about that decision? Is there something calling her there? You know, for when you find yourself in this particular location, you're going to be guided and drawn to a particular, um, a particular outcropping of stone uh, that will be set aside from all others. It will be there by itself. You will be drawn to this because of one, you have already engaged a vortice in that location. This is going to be a transformative experience. One that once you align with this vortice that you've already opened, once you merge with it, you're going to sense a physical aspect of change. One that begins a, a settledness within the energy field. One that provides strength within the physical field. One that provides clarity within this particular realm. And all of that is what is going to guide you. For you are aligning this for yourself. This particular location is one that, yes, holds many other vortices. But this one in particular, you have already, in another dimensional plane, have opened for yourself in this plane of existence. So you are aligning to it. And as you do, you will end up with this transformative experience within self. Awesome. Sounds exciting. Thank you. So Samantha, back in 2019, was in Arizona with her son, and they saw a huge ET ship in the sky. And Samantha communicated telepathically with the beings on the ship. She said they were of a hive mind. Can you tell us who that was, please? And why did they show themselves? The aspect of the visualization is one to align, align the human experience, the experience of one that questions, could it be, does it exist, will it exist, all of the questions. This is one that was aligned to give the experience for the humanness so that it can be a permanent understanding within self that there is this alignment within this alignment with their galactic connections their galactic counterparts for many ask why do I not see or why do I not experience for you already have the depth of understanding that they exist, that the craft already exists, the beings already exist. You do not need the physical confirmation. That is more of a humanness wanting something experiential versus understanding the truth in all of it. As far as this hive mind experience, that it was. That is how... Mm, the craft, other than the exploration crafts that are usually manned by one or two, the larger crafts that are uh, that, just that, a hive experience. There are multiple races, hybrids and mm, pure galactics, mm, Palladians and Arcturians, Orions, mm, Zetas, Reptilians, mm, Agarthans, mm, Martians as well. They are all co-located on one, but they all must act together in order to facilitate 
their experience there with you. So just as the humans have a difficult understanding of how to come together, as you would say, a hive mind experience to all mm, commune together, they must all commune together in order to achieve one outcome. So what was that ship doing? Is it some sort of federation or council? Was it simply there for her or was it on some mission? It was a greater mission itself. There were other exploration ships around. This was one that they already were forecasting. Their mind was already connecting. Their thoughts were already connecting. Their energy field was already connecting through conversation, through understanding, through thought, through like mind experience. They connected to the hive mind experience. This is something that many humans have experienced where uh, many of them gather together. They all collectively in unison connect their thought streams together for the connection to a ship or to a craft in the sky. When you come together as a hive or a collective mind, all one unison thought vibration, that is the highest point at which you can then connect to the other hive experiences that are there in the craft around you. Wonderful. Thank you. And that reminds me, Stephen Greer just mentioned on a podcast, I think today or recently, that there's going to be some sort of gathering in Washington, D.C. in June and then a presentation again to our government. Can you tell us if anything is going to come of that, please? Much is already being provided to you, uh, for you have to understand what you are witnessing now is the mm, the opening channels of, as you would understand, disclosure, but it isn't necessarily disclosure, it's the awareness. For when humanity itself comes to a collective awareness that extraterrestrials, other galactic beings, craft, actually exist when that collective thought pattern begins to form throughout your planet. That is when you are physically going to see existence. For now, it is all mm, compartmentalized. Each individual believes something different than the next. But right now, what you are seeing throughout your planet is an observation here, an observation there, a bit here in your news, a bit here by somebody else. It is this that is beginning to form a collective mind awareness. When the human mind becomes collectively connected to all the same thought process, that becomes a humanity portion of awareness. And that's where, as you would understand it, disclosure takes place. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Thank you very much. All right, so Elaine is wondering who it is that she's channeling through her writing. She senses there are six different energies. Can you tell her about that, please? Your protector is present. That is one primary vibrational source of this writing. Metatron is another source of the writing. The highest vibrational field in which the writing takes place uh, would be a collective of, you would understand it as the all. Uh, for the culmination of all the energy source. For that is the highest vibrational field in which you begin your process. That is the mm, spark in which it begins. That is what connects you to the writing process. Once it begins, then you then connect individually to the other remaining five. Mm, there are ancestors that you are connecting to as well that are providing the writing source. Uh, there are two. Uh, 
one is the grandfather aspect. And there is an uncle as well that is mm, providing the mm, the exaggerated aspect of the writing. Why would you ask if there is mm, this from ancestors that have uh, the capability of providing normal writing, but it is this to understand they are providing you the pure essence, uh, the pure essence of mm, the energy, and that is what you are transforming upon the paper. And finally, it is your galactic alignment, your primary galactic alignment that mm, allows the process to continue. That is the sustained energy that you feel within uh, the writing. That is the fluidity of uh, the writing itself. Thank you for that. Is she only holding the pen because she would be reluctant, like one of our other clients was told? It is uh, not that. It is uh, the writing would become more clear, more fluid, more distinct as it begins to settle. Right now it is mm, trying to adjust all of the energy to one fluid motion. But when you begin to align to each individually, you will understand the beginning process, the sustained process, the strength within the writing, and the, mm, the beauty within the writing. You will understand each individual fluid movement upon the paper. Amazing, thank you for that. So Alex is curious if we're going to have this quote unquote disclosure and our galactics are going to be coming to see us quite soon, why is it that in terms of assisting with this energy device that he's a part of creating, why does he need to do that if they could just come here and present it themselves to humanity? For if your alignment, your team is to present themselves today, this evening, stand before you and provide you with a device, with something that is mm, for all humanity. They would be bringing this from outside of your earth plane. They would be bringing to you something that is constructed from outside of your earth plane and it would not be sustainable for it would be short-lived but yet you would understand its capability you would understand what it is but here upon this planet you do not have the mm, the material to sustain that otherworldly device for you are being given the information, the details, to construct something, to bring something into presence based upon what is here on your Earth planet for its sustainability into the future. Good to know. Thank you. So Maria says that she has a fear relationship with money now, and her intention is to shift that focus to love and peace so that she can enjoy abundance and share it with others. How can she shift that fear of abundance from fear to peace, please? <clears throat> this aspect of a relationship with money, it must be separated from the aspect of abundance. <clears throat> For money is your physical, tangible, Mm, aspect of what is exchanged and that is merely all it is yes does it hold vibration it does um, but it is mm, it is not the sustainable vibration that abundance holds for you understand from its aspect mm, money and abundance and you understand that 
abundance isn't always the physical aspect of money, but it is this blending that has taken place over time. And this comes from mm, a bit of misalignment. The fear itself is one that continues to mm, perpetuate this imbalance. For you've had times, you've had experiences, you have mm, lived portions of your existence where there was no need to worry, there was no need to have fear for the money aspect, for it was there. And that then, mm, you forgot about abundance. For abundance itself should be the overriding factor above any money. Abundance is always provided for. Abundance is everything that is in your existence. For is it not that you have clothes to wear, food to eat, a place to sleep, friends to gather with? For that itself is all that is needed. But yes, for the humanness, you require physical aspects. Physical aspects of this abundance, which is the money. And so this is where it becomes challenging. How does one separate the two and keep them from commingling? You understand you must do a specific thing to get a specific thing that then allows you to have the abundance. But reverse that. Disconnect from the fear for just a moment. Disconnect from the fear and allow yourself, just as it has been expressed from the beginning, this aspect of love within yourself, this aspect of love that is you, and allow that to flood into your aspect of abundance. And in doing so, that is going to ripple out to those, your, as you would say, clients, those that you see, those that you work with, well before they even understand they're going to connect with you. You are already mm, aligning with them. Because your essence of love, your essence of self, is mingling with the abundance, the knowing that you're going to have what you need. And in doing so, that ripples out, then out to all those that you are going to be connecting with, aligning with. And then when you connect and you provide a service or you provide something to them, they are going to then, yes, in exchange, provide you something physical. And that's how it should remain, is the money is just the physical aspect of exchange. But then it provides the abundance you're looking for. So yes, it is confusing, but this should take priority. Abundance should take priority over this. And yes, the challenge is there. How do I pay my bills? How do I pay for things that I need to keep me living? How do I do all these things if I'm just going to hope that my abundance is going to be filled? That's where trust in the universe. And yes, it has been spoken about many times, trusting the universe. This is the most difficult aspect for humanity is to put full trust that all is going to be aligned for you and not against you. Yes, you may be taken to an edge where all of this, all the physical aspect, the money is just about to come to an end. But yet you still have a house, you still have food, you still have clothes, you still have those you gather with, but yet you're coming to an edge and it's only at that point that you really begin to trust. You begin to trust the universe. Universe, I trust. I really trust that you're going to provide for me in the days to come. I'm trusting in all that you do right now for me. Thank you. But why do we not trust in the universe when this is full and when this is full? 
Because at that point, there isn't a need to trust because everything is in balance. No, that's incorrect. Trust should be something that is always in front of you. You're trusting the universe to provide to you everything you need exactly when you need it and how much that you need. Whether it is this or this, first and foremost is to align yourself truly with the universe. And then at the points at which you come to that edge where it becomes a struggle, it's not a struggle because you're already trusting. You've already trusted. You know that, okay, there's a reason. You can look at it differently. There's a reason why I'm at this point. What is that reason? How do I navigate through this? How do I realign this? Is this time for myself? Is this time for somebody else? Because you can see differently than when you are up against that edge and you have nothing else here, for it is then a challenge. So how do you place all of your love into that aspect? <clears throat> how do you remove fear from it? It's a challenge, but one must reverse the aspects of what is priority. And it is to align, and not half-heartedly, but knowing that the universe is there to provide and not take away. The universe is there to conspire with you and not against you. And it is to trust in that in each breath. Wonderful advice. Thank you. Sandy has a question about what happens to us when we transition. And there is some school of thought that there is a net where souls get trapped and are forced back to reincarnate as a human again. Can you speak to that and who is there to greet us? Or how do we avoid that net if it exists? And for this understanding, this layering, this netting um, that uh, some sense is trapping one soul and sending it right back and keeping it trapped here, or not allowing it then to transition back to source. It is much more complicated than that. For there are agreements beyond mm, your physicality when you uh, sign a contract, your pre-birth plan to come into this existence. There are underlying agreements that you've already put in place. These are uh, agreements within your contract that remain permanent through each existence. And some, they have an underlying, mm, one would say, clause in their contract. That there will be moments at which, at the moment of transition, they are immediately called and needed into another existence. There is no time to go back directly to source and spend a bit of time at source and recalculate and reassign themselves another contract. But they are then redirected right back into another existence. So this is why one would say that they are trapped in this existence. They, it is almost as if they're ricocheted back off of some arbitrary space above your planet and back into another another being, another human. But it is this underlying clause within their contract that they've agreed upon that they are purposefully being reassigned immediately because they are needed. They are needed to mm, fulfill uh, additional aspects of another contract. Right from birth all the way to completion of that. And yes, there are points along their uh, journey and their existence that they fully transition back to source and rewrite another contract but always having that clause within their contract that this is a potential that could happen if needed. So do not fear uh, that um, all humans have this written into their contract. They do not. So as this aspect of transition takes place there should be no fear that you're immediately going to come back because at the moment of transition, you will know 
it is to enjoy your existence as human, enjoy this existence all the way to the point of transition without any fear of what is to take place at the moment of transition. For at the moment of transition, all becomes evident. Every aspect of every contract that you've ever made becomes evident. It is clear right before you, right at that moment. And you will know, oh, I do have this clause and I will be coming back immediately. And you'll be back immediately to enjoy another existence with another purpose. Or you'll transition right back to source and enjoy the time and source to recalculate and re reassign yourself another contract. But it is that moment of transition that is the, mm, one would say that is the best aspect because you get to see it very clearly before you what you've assigned for yourself, what you've aligned for yourself, what you've agreed to, and all existences that you've played a role in. All of it, right there in front of you. And that is to some the most enjoyable aspect. Thank you. Didn't you call those foundational documents or something? Yes, many call it foundational documents, underlying clauses, dependent upon how you wish to call it. And what are other reasons people would have a foundation document, like to come in with a certain other soul over and over again, or? One would understand them as, mm, some have this aspect of this, mm, mm, this aspect of a twin flame where they are one energy source divided into two, and this reoccurs over and over again. In some, it's a challenge to find that aspect of self once again to reunite. And this will take place over and over again. Others, uh, you would understand them as um, they'd be utilized as a walk-in where they, mm, they do not transition, but they do mm, swap existences with another existent soul. They do not go to source. They immediately go into another existence uh, to complete. And then another um, higher self soul would come in. Um, there are many different aspects, but understanding that um, there is some that have those clauses, those founding documents, and others, their contracts are completely free um, to experience just as they are. Fascinating. Thank you for all of that information. Last question. Amanda and Dave were doing uh, some timeline therapy. <clears throat> they had an, a very, very powerful experience of planetary healing of the feminine. The Divine Mother was present and Gaia was present as well. Um, both parties were transformed. Can you share with them actually what was taking place on a deeper level, please? Hmm. The aspect of blending, their um, coming into unison with their um, energetic fields, their um, higher selves, this merging of energetic fields upon an alternate plane, an alternate plane of reality that is not quite mm, firm. It is just a, a place to hold over. This is a point at which to fully integrate those two aspects of self into one aspect, one aspect of a plane. Then it is then to take both of them as unison into a construct of, yes, Mother Earth, there was a galactic experience. It is this, to one say, it is an aspect of a web, not quite your quantum field, your quantum web, but it is a construct in which they can see all aspects of existence. They can peer into different aspects of existence, whether that is uh, Mother Earth, Gaia, whether it is galactic, whether it is each individual self, whether it is other roles they have played within their human existence. It is this mm, sphere of existence, this construct that they merge themselves into. That in itself was a healing place. It was one to unify and realign their physical aspect with their energetic aspect. This was 
Hmm. One must understand this is not just by chance. This is something that they have agreed upon within their contracts in order for them to merge and do this experience together. So this will not be the first experience like this. They're going to bring this into um, they're going to bring this into existence to understand by others how to blend energy fields to enter into a construct. First, they must enter into a holdover place and to, in order to bring together the energy field appropriately, then enter into the construct. And it may not all be the same construct that you enter into, but it is this construct that you'll be able to enter into a healing place to realign the humanness with the energetic. And as you emerge from that, your awareness of your humanity is much different. So they'll be helping others with that. This is correct. Beautiful. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, do you have any closing remarks before we end this evening, please? It is to understand your existence and your humanness, but it is also to understand your alignment with your pure self, the purity of yourself, this aspect of love, this aspect that does emanate out into the world. It is to begin this mm, shedding, this mm, deconstructing, the removal of any restrictions, but it must begin here. And you must challenge yourself to understand this about yourself. It doesn't matter how you put the words together this word love and what you put before it or after it. But it is to understand its vibration, its purest vibration. And that is you. That is your vibration. And that is what will, will effectively unite. And yes, these are simple words and these are simple concepts. And many have questions about that, but it is this trust that you must have. For we see it, we understand where you are, we understand the purity of each individual. But now you must find that within yourself. For the days to come and the weeks to come and the years to come, there is much change ahead. But the change is all in your favor. The change upon this planet is all in humanity's favor. It will end up there. But as you begin to express yourself differently, those transitional points will be much easier. So challenge yourself. Understand what this essence of self truly is, this vibration of self, and allow that for others to see. Beautiful. Thank you so very much for being present this evening. And as always, the collective is here for your information, knowledge, and love.